When it comes to beauty, we often focus on the eyes, the nose, and let's not forget what's become the most popular area for filler these days, the lips. But there's one feature that's so often overlooked and underestimated when it comes to the beautification of one's face, and that's none other than the chin. I remember how I used to pose for pictures. I would stick my lips out like this, which would make my lips more prominent, but in doing this, it would activate my chin muscle, which caused it to shorten and sick back even further. This wasn't enhancing my appearance at all. Back then, we didn't have a good understanding of the importance of balance from all angles. Now that we have a deeper understanding of beauty, we know now that the chin is considered one of the most important parts of our facial features. A balanced chin helps create harmony between the upper and lower parts of the face, which is why the chin is such an important and defining feature of the face that greatly impacts your appearance. So I'm going to give the chin the recognition it deserves and show you why you shouldn't overlook your chin. I'll help you decide if you're a good candidate for both chin filler and Botox to the chin, we'll compare profiles of celebrities and I'll let you know which celebrities I think have likely undergone chin augmentation and we'll look at real patient before and afters of patients who have had chin filler. And we're starting now. So what makes for an attractive chin? Well, we know from this video that the position of the chin has a great influence on facial harmony. A chin that's aligned or comes close to aligning with the lower border of the lower lip and sits in more of a vertical angle will look more balanced than if it's angled back and more convex. And as discussed in this video, a relaxed chin that's not in a state of tension that's free of dimpling will look more attractive than when it looks tense, especially if your chin sits back further and lacks projection. It also comes into play with perception of youthful a nicely projected chin with fullness that lacks shadows looks more youthful because the chin loses volume and recedes as we age. Length also plays a role. When the chin is short for the face, it can create an imbalance between the features, making the nose, lips, and forehead appear more prominent. Throughout history, those who were considered to have the most beautifully balanced faces usually had chins that were proportional, not too large or too small in relation to their other facial features. If you split the face into thirds, it's ideal for the length of the lower face to be close to a third of the face starting from the base of your nose to the bottom of your chin. This is Shia LaBeouf's real profile, and on the right is a photo edited profile where his chin was lengthened. Comment below if you think his facial features and profile look to be in more balanced proportions in the augmented profile on the right. He also appears to have a slightly more masculine profile on the right as the chin is more highly associated with masculinity in males. Males usually possess a more broad, prominent chin with a more square appearance, whereas females usually possess more pointed chins. Having a more vertically positioned chin with fullness in the most anteriorly projected point known as the pagonian really complements the profile because it balances the lower face with the lips. This was Ana de Armas's profile back in the day versus now. You can see she has more projection and also more length than she did in the past. So she's either likely had a chin implant or filler. When comparing profiles of various types of faces, those with round full features, those with delicate fine features, different ancestries, no matter what your feature type or ancestry, lack of chin contour makes for a less balanced look. How can chin filler enhance your profile? Chin filler can help project the chin more forward, lengthen the chin, and decrease hollowness or shadows from aging. This is why I say every angle will be your best angle. You can also use neuromodulators like Botox and Dysport to help relax the ventalis or chin muscle, which can decrease dimpling. This is how my chin used to look before I started treating it with Botox and the after is on the right, much more relaxed, wouldn't you say? Neuromodulators can also slightly alter the position of the pagonian to a more attractive angle. And this can help your chin filler last longer because the muscle won't be working against the filler, which is why it's a great adjunct treatment to do with chin filler if your muscle is active. Here's a patient I treated with only Botox, no filler was done, and you can see her chin is slightly projected in a more vertical angle. This would not take the place of chin filler, which she can really benefit from. As mentioned earlier, the chin I feel is a really underestimated area for both men and women, but I especially say women a lot of times underestimate the chin because they can become so obsessed with lips. 
The lips have become the most popular area to treat with filler today. Now that we know how big of a role they play in attraction, sex appeal, and beauty, I think so many women with naturally full lips see so many other women getting lip filler. Those who are type one, two, or three on the lip thickness scale, and they see how it really enhances those women's looks, and they feel that it'll do the same for them. When I posted that I needed a lip filler model, I had a few people submit their photos who had naturally full, large, Lips. Now, if you naturally have large full lips, let's say five on the lip thickness scale, that's great. But making your lips even larger isn't always going to enhance your beauty if your chin lacks the projection to balance them. What they don't realize is that they can really enhance their beauty from getting chin filler instead of lip filler. Let's use Journey as an example. She's beautiful and I don't want people thinking because I'm using her as an example that I don't think she's attractive. And I'm saying this because in my last chin filler video, some people commented, the celebrities I used were beautiful. As if I shouldn't suggest anything because they're attractive and yes, they are. That's why I use them in videos, but it's more about, can we make someone look even more attractive? So if we look at Journey, she's got full features and beautifully thick lips that have lots of projection from the side. Let's say we were to inject her lips with filler, which would increase the thickness and projection of her lips a little more. This could make her chin appear to sit back even further because her lips are slightly increasing in projection, which could make her profile less balanced because the lips would overpower the profile even more. It's not that I wouldn't enhance Journey's lips with lip filler if she wanted. I may actually suggest a lip flip for her, but I definitely think she could benefit from chin filler more so. What could really enhance her beauty more than lip filler, which she really wouldn't benefit as much from because her lips are already very full, would be to project her chin with chin filler. Here's another example of what her profile could look like with chin filler, her actual profiles on the left, and the profile simulating chin fillers on the right. Filler to the chin would also elongate her chin a bit, making it more balanced with the upper and middle parts of her face. Which profile do you think Journey looks more attractive in? The left or right? The only thing that changed was her chin, and on the right is what she could look like with chin filler. Comment your thoughts below. When it comes to beauty, these small details matter. A few millimeters in modification of chin projection can significantly alter attractiveness on side and profile views. That little fullness to the center of the chin really complements one's profile. So how do you determine if you're a good candidate for chin filler? We discussed it in this video, but let's do it again. You take a thin straight object like a Q-tip and from a neutral position with your head tilted perfectly level like this, not up or down, neutral as if you had a leveler, you may need to take a phone so you can take a pic, angle the object straight down right on the border of your lower lip and hold the object perfectly vertically straight down. The closer your chin in touching the object, the more balance you have on profile and side views. The further away your chin from the object, the less balance it has on profile and side views. If your chin sits at the distance of around one, you may only need one or two syringes of filler. If you're at two, you'll likely need at least three syringes. If you're at a three, you'll likely need three or more syringes. And you may, depending on how far your chin sits back away from the object, be a good candidate for a surgical procedure like a chin implant. So as you can see, this patient is a great candidate for chin filler. According to the test, she's close to a level two. So over the course of a few months, we did three syringes of filler. And these are her results. You can see this really enhanced her profile view. She looks more balanced and it brought her closer to the line. It enhanced her oblique or 45 angle views. She also did have some sculpture done. She had four vials over the course of six months to her temples and preauricular area, which softened her look and gave her width, which complements her oblong heart facial shape. And if you want to learn more about what sculpture is, how it works, and if you can benefit from this collagen stimulator, make sure to check out my sculpture playlist on this channel. She can also benefit from a little jawline filler, so make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can check out my upcoming video on jawline filler to follow her journey. This patient probably sits at a level two on the scale. She has an oval face shape with roundness to her features, and she could benefit from a little structure and a little length, which you can notice on her side profile. Lack of definition and projection in the chin can give the appearance of a double chin because the distance between the superior area of the neck and the chin is shorter. We started out by doing two syringes of filler to her chin, and you can see that it gave her face a little more structure. It even looks as though she lost a little weight in her face, and I like that chin filler takes away from the fullness to the submental area, or the area under the chin. 
And it does this because it's projecting your chin and elongating this plane. She could do another syringe and get a little more balance and more structure, but this was a good start. In my last chin filler video, I got a comment discussing sliding genioplasty as an alternative instead of chin filler or a chin implant. This is true, a chin implant isn't the only option to enhance your chin if you don't get filler. You can get sliding genioplasty. Genioplasty can be a great option to improve a larger variety of issues than a chin implant or chin filler can help with, especially if your chin is very retrusive. Or it could be a much better option in these cases, but let's not forget it's an invasive surgery in which they're cutting into your bone to slide the mandible forward and sometimes down. And all surgeries, whether it be a chin implant and especially sliding genioplasty, Come with recovery. A lot of times people don't want to undergo surgery. Comment below if you feel me. Real Housewives of New Jersey star Jennifer Aiden got her chin implant removed after she finally figured out that she didn't like it seven months later after surgery. That's another surgical procedure to have it removed. As a matter of fact, a 2018 article stated there's been a decline in surgical chin augmentation, and although they are unclear why, they speculate it's likely partially due to the increasing popularity of minimally invasive treatment options. Like filler. Determining the best procedure for you requires careful consideration of your anatomy as well as the risks and benefits of each procedure. If you are a really retrusive level three on the scale, a chin implant or sliding genioplasty may be a better option for you. But in the appropriate patient, chin filler offers a non-surgical, non-permanent method of enhancing the chin that doesn't come with a recovery. As you can see from the results, it's a game changer. Taking steps to enhance your chin can truly be your secret weapon to a more beautifully balanced look from all angles. Don't forget to watch these videos next for more secret weapons to a more naturally beautiful you.